Another busy weekend on grounds here at the University of Virginia as we take a look at the weekend that was. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another installment of the Orange and Blue Report. I'm Dave Kane, voice of the Cavaliers, and we reflect now on, well, a lot of highly ranked teams were here in Charlottesville. We'll get to those games in a moment, but we start things off on the gridiron where Virginia was looking to get to a 2 0 for the first time since 2012. We go to Scott Stadium. It was a beautiful day for football with temperatures in the low 70s. Military Appreciation Day in Charlottesville, recognizing our veterans of now and past. For Virginia, trying to get the scoring going early, but a little trickeration from Bronco Mendenhall and company, it would backfire. It was Nash getting stopped on the fake field goal try. You can see just a couple yards short of that first down. Virginia trying to keep this drive going, but unable to. So there was no score at that point. Nash Griffin again coming up just two yards short. Indiana, well, they were challenged in a big way throughout this contest. Just one week after putting up nearly 600 yards of offense, they were held to 318 yards of offense against Virginia. How about Juan Thornhill coming up with his first pick of the season? That was in the first half, stopping a would-be drive. It would also be the last throw from Richard Lego over the course of that game as he was lifted. His counterpart, Kurt Banker, trying to keep Virginia going on this drive. Finds Alameda Zacchaeus, a couple nifty moves, trying to get Virginia into the end zone. Still scoreless at this time. Cavaliers would not get in. They'd have to settle for a field goal. Indiana coming back. They were scoreless until this. Simi Cobb spinning off a couple defenders. He's one of their biggest weapons in UCY. Breaking tackles, taking it to the end zone. Indiana goes ahead 7-3 to three at that juncture. They would add two more scores before the end of the half to take a 17-3 lead. Virginia on its first drive of the second half, however. Jordan Ellis capping off the drive to pull Virginia back to within seven. It was some good blocking up the middle, some rare daylight for a Virginia running back. Cavaliers only had 55 yards rushing over the course of this game. But Indiana, well, they would come back again. Here is the incumbent, Peyton Ramsey. A beautiful pass to one of those big targets. It was Donovan Hale coming down with the catch in front of Juan Thornhill this time. He puts Indiana out in front. It looked like this one may be over, especially after this play. Kurt Fangard blasted in the backfield, coughs it up. That would lead to what we thought was about a 65-yard touchdown return for the Hoosiers, salting this one away, but not so fast. Upon further review, you go to the cameras, you can see Greg Gooch. Targeting is called. Wipe off the touchdown. Virginia is alive again. Kurt Banker trying to make something out of it. This time he finds Joe Reed. Makes his way into the end zone. The sophomore with his first career touchdown at the University of Virginia. The Cavaliers are back in business. Back to within seven points. But Indiana, well, this would be the nail in the coffin. A short punt from Lester Coleman. Fielded by Jason Harris. Harris gets some good blocks against the tired Virginia defense playing special teams. You can see the rush lanes. That was all she wrote, Indiana would take the lead, again extend it, and that was as close as Virginia could get as Indiana would put the Cavaliers away by a final score of 34 to 17. Virginia will try to rebound coming up this Saturday at noon as UConn comes to Charlottesville. To the turf field we go. Number 10 Virginia facing off against number one Duke, the number one offense against the number one defense. Something had to give. Freshman phenom, Peen Dicka runs right through the Blue Devil defense, centering pass finds Tara Batiste. She would become the first player to score against Duke all season. Virginia leads 1-0. Tie score, penalty corner. Here's Aaron Shanahan with a shot deflected by Greta L. UVA leads it 2-1 as the Cavaliers continue to stretch the lead three to one now as Batiste shows why she's an All-American. Loose ball in the center circle. Fires a no-look shot, upper 90. Virginia defeats number one ranked Duke and the number one ranked team for just the second time in program histories. They would go on to defeat Michigan State six to one on Sunday, improving their record to five and one. They return home to the turf field Friday for a five o'clock matchup against William and Mary. To Klockner Stadium we go. Sunday, matinee affair, number eight Virginia hosting its second top 10 team of the week in the visiting and fifth ranked Nittany Lions of Penn State. UVA would get off on the right foot early. Well, make that the left foot of Courtney Peterson. Peterson chips the keeper from the left flank and it is one nothing who's Cavaliers. This was just a terrific shot from way outside from Peterson. Well, it wasn't over yet, though. A long ways from it, as a matter of fact. Back come the Nittany Lions. Beautiful through ball from Charlotte Williams to Haley Eckhart, and we are level at one just before the half. Just after halftime, however, 
Hannah Kerner would put the ball into the mixer and Betsy Brandon heads it home for a 2-1 advantage. After a Penn State penalty, Phoebe McLaren launches her free kick from 45 yards out and it finds the back of the net. It was a mob scene. UVA wins 3-2, improves to 5-2, now heads to NC State for the ACC opener on Friday night. Just a few of the many highlights that were over the course of the weekend here in Charlottesville. And remember, we're not done yet. Check in Wednesday. Greta L., one of the key contributors for the field hockey team, she'll talk about what it was like to take down number one Wednesday here on the Orange and Blue Report. And then, of course, on Friday, Jeff White joins me as we break down Virginia's matchup with UConn. You can check it all out right here on VirginiaSportsTV.com.